Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I'm your host, x.e.l.o. And today what I wanna do is talk about Contact 8 and how to actually set up multiple outs inside of Contact 8, seeing that it just came out. It may be a little bit different for you guys. So let's get into it, show you how to set it up in Reaper. Let's go. All right, so this theme is called Reaper Tips. So uh, shout out to Reaper Tips for the theme. So let's get started. So usually what you want to do is make sure that your projects are actually set up correctly. So there's two ways to do it. You can go to this little eye icon here and this will take you to your project settings or you can just go to file and then go down to project settings or you can hit alt and enter, right? So this is the project settings that we want to be. So without this, the way, the method that I use will not work. So make sure that you actually have this check that says allow feedback in routing. So what this will allow you to do is actually hear the sounds back through Reaper so that you don't need to actually have like a separate MIDI and then a separate audio. You just have a MIDI and an audio and it kind of just works together, right? So once you click on that, you click on save as default project settings, and then you don't have to worry about actually setting this up ever again. Even if you're using any other VST, whether that be like sample tank, Spitfire, Anything that actually has multiple outs, this does help with that, right? So you don't have to worry about that anymore. All right, so let's get everything set up. So I'm gonna right click in this track area and I'm gonna go to insert a virtual instrument or track and I'm gonna find contact eight. So I have contact eight here. So I can double click it and it should try to open it up. All right, and then you'll get this dialog window that access you do you want to do outs i'm going to say no right so once you hit on no it should actually open up the contact uh, i will say that contact eight does load a lot slower than seven and here you have contact eight right and i'm using the contact eight player so you can use this on a contact eight player you don't need to have the full version of uh contact in order to do this so i'm going to minimize this screen here Right. And usually what you want to do is go back to the older view. For some reason, they did not set it up to where you can actually use outs in the newer looking setup. So like right here, you can't use it. Like even if you go to view, there's nothing for your outs. Right. So if you go to, uh, if you click on like the library, cause this is basically the library screen and this is the main screen that they actually have now. So this is the screen that has the tools at the top and you have your instruments here and you know you can do your combined tools or you can just do the regular tools the chords or the phrases or you can even use leap right so this is where you would actually do that this is the screen that they want you to use now inside of contact but it does not allow you to do outs here so this is the problem that i've run into uh so far with it so i'm going to show you how to actually get it set up so what you want to do is go up here to view and uh, you want to go to where it says classic view for some reason, classic view is the only way to actually do this. Now they kind of took away that option on the other uh, views that you have. So basically what you want to do is go up to views again. And this time you can see it has outputs. So now you can actually see your outputs inside of contact. And I do like the fact that they made it a lot easier to kind of do your, your patching. So you can click on here and you can go down to where it says factory and change it to uh, stereo 16 outs. So this is usually the one you want to actually use, right? So if you did want to keep this view and so you'll actually have your contact eight looking like the old stuff, you can just go up to view and then go set view settings as default. So anytime you open it up, it'll actually open with this look in here. I'm not going to do it right now, but if you want to do that, that is how you would actually set it up right and you also want to make sure that the outs will actually go to where they need to go because uh, sometimes they have this omni thing on there where you're not able to actually hear the sounds so let me just make sure i take you through that as well so you go to file go to options right and once you're in options you want to go to handling and as you see it says assign to omni what you want to do is change this if you have this on anything that you actually have as a multi, all of them will play at the same exact time. So you don't necessarily want that. So what you want to do is go here and go to assign first free. So now when you actually go through it, 
it'll just go down the line instead of playing everything or every instrument with one uh with one instance i hope that makes sense so if you do try it without it you'll see what i'm talking about but yeah so now you should be all set up and good to go all right so now that we've actually done that what we want to do is make sure we can set up the outs for contact so I'm going to double click in this box and it's going to open up the Reaper effects side section. So now you can kind of see the side effects and you want to go up to edit and then you want to go down to build 16 channel mini routing for this track. All right. And I can actually close this out right now. So now I have all my MIDI set up over here on the side, which is good. This is what we want. So all the minis over here, 16 channels, all right? And usually the easiest way to get all this set up is if you click on this option here for your receives, you'll have this big dialog box and basically all your MIDI is right here on this side. So all the MIDI channels is here. These 16 of them are right here on this side. You wanna make sure that this track is not making any sound. So you wanna make sure you take off this master to the channels, take that off, and then you should be ready to go and actually load up your sound. So basically what you want to do is click here where it says add new send. And I'm going to go down to the bottom and it says add sends to these tracks, right? So now I have every single track that I have inside of my mixer on here, which is my compressor. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete the reverb. I'm going to delete delay and the chorus. And I'm also going to delete my splitter track that I have, right? So now all I have is contact in here. So the contact eight MIDI is in here now, right? So now we just need to make sure that they're actually going out to the right channels from this place. Okay. So now you want to just make sure that you have, you're actually sending them to the right place for the audio files, right? Cause the MIDI is here. So the MIDI is going to play, but now you need it to make it work for the audio. So over here, you want to go down. So one and two is what you want for this one. So you want to go here and you want to go stereo. And you want to go to new channels on send track, right? And we're going to do stereo. So we're going to go three and four, right? And right here, we're going to go five and six, same way, new channel, stereo source, five and six. Go here, new channel. We're going to go seven and eight. And I'm just going to go through the rest of them so you don't have to go through this torture. <laughs> All right, so now we have all of them set up all the way up to 32. So now all of these channels are actually set up correctly on here. So I can close this out now. So what I want to do is actually highlight all of these tracks. I think it's a little easier to highlight them from down here. So I'm gonna click on here, the end, and I'm gonna go hold down shift. Now all of them are actually highlighted. And what I want to do is hold down alt and I want to click on this first setting here, the sends, right? So now all of them are actually activated. So basically what this does is turns on this master send, right? For the channel. So now you can actually send things to the master. So you'll be able to hear the instruments coming out. All right. So if you actually want to get even uh, more fancier than this, you can scroll down toward the bottom and make a new track, bring this track all the way up to the top, right? And you can go all the way back down all the way up to the contact one, hold down shift and click it. And then we're just going to drag these up and make it into a folder. And just that simple. Now we have a folder for contact, right? And you can just name it. All right. So now you have that set up on here. All right. And just tape this a little bit of a step further. What I can do is right click where you have your record button, right click on there and go to automatic record arm. I like to automatically record on my track. So when I'm going through them, I can just kind of start recording. And then also what I like to do is make sure that my MIDI overdub is actually set on the track. So if I'm actually recording something in there and it's a loop, I can just kind of add little things on there without worrying about a destructive, you know, recording or having those uh, different tracks form underneath. So uh, that's the method that I really like to use. Right? So, after you have all that set up, all right? So I'll highlight all of them on here. I'm going to right click on the top one, right? And I'm going to go to where it says save track as a track template. 
So now we can actually save this. Um, I'm gonna make a new folder. I'm gonna right click in here and I'm gonna go new and I'm gonna add a folder, right? And this one is gonna be called. All right, so now I have a contact eight folder. And what I can do is name this, right? And I can hit save. So now I have it saved inside of Reaper so I can pull this up at any time and actually have my outs for contact. So let's see if it works. So I'm gonna click on contact and let's see if we can add some things in here. All right, so I have this blueprint set up on here. This is for uh, from Fractured Sounds and these are absolutely free. I just have a couple of them set up. I have the guitar, I have the piano, I have the violin, some gentle winds and an electric keys on here as well. So just a couple of instruments on here. So if you're actually trying to use them on here, you can go to the first track, which is your first out. Right, so that works. Uh, the thing is, if I go to this next one, which is the piano, which is down here. And as you see, it's still coming out of that first track. So if I go down to the next one, which would be the violins, it's still coming out of the wrong track, right? So what you wanna do is go right here to where it says preset patch configuration, click on that. And you wanna go to batch functions. So what I'm gonna do is do this clear out section and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument, right? So once you click on that, you'll probably get this on here and tell you this things is gonna change, hit yes. So now I only have what I need and this name them right down here as well, right? So now when I play on this uh, strings, it's actually coming out of the correct channel. So if I go here, and if I go here, right, and if I go here, So there you go. So now you have it set up to where all your sounds can actually come out through the contact player and into Reaper. And what's really cool about doing it this way, uh, then doing it the way you have MIDI and then you have audio set up, you don't, you can only, you can name it one time and it'll go to all of them, right? So if I name this one, uh, what was it? So if I name this one guitar, right? And as you see down here in the mixer, it names it guitar as well. Whereas the other one, you have to actually name it up here. Then you have to go down here and name it in your mixer. And it seems, it was like a headache to kind of do it that way. I really like this way a lot easier, a lot better. Um, and it's easier to save as well. But with that being said, that's pretty much the end of this one. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed setting up the Contact 8 inside of Reaper. If you have like any questions or concerns, please leave them below in the comment section. If you haven't already, make sure you are liking and subscribing to the channel and hit that bell notification that I'll let you know when I drop another video. All right, so that's pretty much the end of this one. Thank you guys once again for watching Learning Reaper. Till next time, people. Peace. Hey, you. Yes, you. YouTube wants you to watch this video next, man. Go ahead and click it. I'll wait. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. I'm not going to keep waiting here. All right. I will see you in the next video, though. Peace.